Let's talk about Sai's abilities, talents, constellation, some good builds for her and her general gameplay. I'll start off by saying that I believe Sayu is probably the funnest character to play right now and that hands down stems from her elemental skill but I'll talk about that more when I get to that section. We'll begin at the beginning. Her normal and charge attack pattern. They're pretty standard, a four swing combo for her normal attack though her third attack looks a bit like it's split into two and that it is a bit true. The attack is split into two but so is the actual damage value. That's why in the menu it says 43 plus 43% while the others are around the 75% mark. And her charge attack is still the classic whirlwind Nothing really worth noting on this one. She doesn't boost charge attack damage in any way, so I don't believe it's even worth using. Moving on to the meat of her whole kit, we're going to start with her elemental skill. You can either press E and have Sai swing at the enemies dealing a moderate amount of animo damage, or you can hold E and... When you hold Sai's elemental skill, you turn into a ball of adorableness and speed through enemies, hitting them with animo damage. This method can be used to do some crazy damage as you can see I'm doing in the test area for Sayu. But you can also use this skill for the second strongest mode of transportation, just after waypoint slash teleporting. So let's put this speed to the test. Sayu will use her elemental skill to race against one of the next fastest movements in the game, Ayaka's Dash. The race will go from Liyue's southernmost waypoint all the way to the northernmost waypoint. Now wait, that wasn't meant to happen. There you have it guys, they're both the same speed because I have seen a few kind of debates going on saying that Sayu's movement speed from her elemental skill is fastest movement in the game and not really. Uh, it, it's the same speed as Ayaka's dash, the end of argument really. One thing I actually will give Sayu though is that her movement speed from her elemental skill is extremely convenient. Anyway, moving on to Sayu's elemental burst, Sayu throws her Tanaki doll thing onto the battlefield and it will either heal the active character or damage nearby enemies. Think of Sayu's burst as the same as Bennett's burst. They both will only heal you to 70% unless you have C1, which I'll explain when we get to constellations. Sayu's elemental burst will heal the active character, no off-field characters will get actually healed. If the character that is active is at 70% or above, the Tanuki she summoned will instead start dealing animo damage to nearby enemies. So pretty much, she summons a Bennett field without the damage buff and a stronger Guoba from Zhang Ling's toolkit. Sayu's elemental burst scales off of attack, so if you want to heal with Sayu, build attack. Sayu's first passive talent allows her elemental skill to heal, but not very well. What it actually does is Sayu will do extra healing when she triggers a swell reaction. This method will do a baseline of 300 healing and will be boosted by 1.2 for every point of elemental mastery you have. And from this method alone, you'll be doing about 450 to 600 healing using 250 elemental mastery as a baseline. Sayu's second passive talent is a bit of a weird one. This passive makes it so the heal portion of Sayu's burst has a splash effect where characters near the actual healed character get 20% of the heal. To me that seems rather pointless but that's just me. The other thing this passive does is make the damage portion of Sayu's burst have an increased AoE. So the, just the same effect but with damage. Now going on to the probably the most overpowered, most anticipated, most desired, unbelievably powerful passive. A passive to end all passive. Sayu's third passive breaks the game and gives the player unparalleled power. Sayu's third passive gives everyone in the party ninja-like abilities. And what I mean by this is no one in the party will startle animals when you get near them. I could not think of something so overpowered. The gathering of crystal flies has just gotten a hundred times easier. Here's a list of the animals you won't scare away when Sayu is in your party. You can find this in the other section of the living beings slash wildlife archive. Now let's take a look at Sayu's constellations. We'll be looking at the ones that actually change something. So that's one, two, four, and six. 
Constellation 1 allows Sai's burst to heal past 70%, much like Bennett's C1, and on top of that, it will attack enemies and heal the active character at the same time, so a pretty good constellation. C2 gives Sai the option to drastically boost her elemental skill damage. For every 0.5 seconds Sai is rolling around, she will get 3.3% damage boost with a maximum of 66%. So using her this way, can net you some pretty high damage. Her fourth constellation is just a bit of gameplay fluidity. Sayu receives 1.2 energy when she triggers a swell reaction once every two seconds. This constellation just makes her gameplay a bit more fluid. And her final constellation is a massive boost to both damage and healing. And I believe this constellation will be a massive game changer. So what it does is allows Sayu's burst to benefit from elemental mastery. For every point of elemental mastery, her burst will get a 0.2% attack increase up to 400% and she will heal three more HP up to a total of 6,000 extra. I expect massive things from C6 Sayu because I do feel that she could become the ultimate healer. Now having looked at all the guaranteed sources of power increase, let's take a look at the areas where RNG and Gacha take control. So what weapon should you use? If you're a free-to-play player, then you are in luck. I would say her top 4-star weapon is the craftable weapon, the prototype Archaic. The weapon has attack percent as its substat, giving you even more damage as well as healing with a useful ability. Something like the Rain Slasher is also pretty good, especially if you happen to have C6 Sayu, definitely having that extra elemental mastery would be super handy. Or if you have been spending a bit of dough on some weapon banners in the past and have a few 5-stars, then you might want to use the Wolf's Gravestone for its massive amount of attack and a useful ability. Or maybe even if you have the Unforged purely for its attack, the ability not doing too much for you. More RNG comes from the artifacts. There are four sets I can recommend for you guys to use on Sayu. Number one would be the two set Gladiator's Finale for that attack boost. Number two is the two set Shimanawa's Reminiscence, again for that attack boost. Number three would be two set Viridescent Venera for the Animo Damage Bonus. And number four would be a four set Noble Oblige if you want to make it so Sayu also buffs her teammates damage with her elemental burst. You can use the first three in any combination really, while for Noblesse you will need four good pieces of Noblesse Oblige. Now going on to the most RNG thing in this game. In regards to stats, there are two different builds I can recommend and two different stat priorities that I can recommend. You'll either want to do the massive damage with moderate healing build or high damage and high healing build. For the massive damage and moderate healing, you will want to target these stats in this order. Attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, raw attack, elemental mastery. The attack percent will carry the healing to a moderate level, while both crit stats will massively boost your raw damage. For the high damage, high healing, you want to target these stats in this order. Attack percent, raw attack, elemental mastery, crit rate, crit damage. You want it this way due to attack and EM being contributors to Sai's healing and your damage will just be higher due to the high amount of attack you have. Now the big question, how should you play Sayu? What's her playstyle? Well there's two. You can do it this way or you can do it this way. Those are really two of the best ways to actually play Sayu, and if I'm being a bit honest here, the first example is actually so much fun. Anyway, that is my overview of Sayu. There are a few ways to build it and have fun. In the end, you can build your Sayu however you want or have available to you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then hit that like button. And if you enjoy this guide styled content, then hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.